Well guys, it looks like the drama surrounding Niall Niami's Mega Mansion The One out in Bel Air, California is going to continue for a little while longer because there is now a fight over the proceeds of the bankruptcy auction with some big creditors in a position where they will likely not ever be repaid for the money that they lent out on this project. I think that anybody who's been following this story probably saw this coming. I mean, this 105,000 square foot home selling for $141 million at auction back in March was a record-setting situation for a number of reasons, but when it was later revealed that the debts on this place amounted to as much as $250 million in total, it was only a matter of time before some of the creditors came out to fight. In today's episode, let's dive into some of the details on the latest news of this controversial property. Okay, so I feel a little redundant having to tell the backstory here, but like half the people who tune into these videos are watching my channel for the first time, so really quick, let me just bring everybody up to speed on what's going on here. Super long story short, there was this developer out in Bel Air, California, who spent the past 10 years building a 105,000 square foot mega mansion at the top of a mountain in Bel Air. The house was loaded with insane amenities like a 50 car garage, a four lane bowling alley, a golf simulator, a movie theater, a hair salon, a wellness center, a running track, basically everything that you could ever need in a home. This developer spent all this time building the house out into what it is today, and as he got closer to completion, he started rumoring that he would be listing the house for sale when it was done for $500 million. Yes, by the way, you heard that right. That's a half a billion dollars for a house. Well, this house ended up costing way more than expected to build. The developer ran out of money as he got closer to the finish line, and ultimately the home ended up going to bankruptcy auction where it sold to Fashion Nova CEO Richard Sagian for $141 million just a few months back. Because of the bankruptcy, it was pretty public knowledge that the developer, Niall Niami, had a ton of debt on this property, not just to purchase it, but to build it out into what it is today. But the judge approved that auction sale, even though it was clear that if the property did sell at that price, there would be a lot of people left who would not be repaid. That's the story in a nutshell. We've covered this topic in way more detail in the past, so if you're interested in hearing more, go check out some of my older videos. And by the way, if you're wondering where I got all that footage that I just showed you guys from around the house, I actually toured the house myself last summer with one of the lead contractors. I'll link the house tour videos down below if you want to check those out as well. The dispute that's happening around the one property at this point is interesting because the sale date has already passed and the buyer of the property has already taken possession. But to be clear on what's happening right now is first that there were a ton of people who were still owed money when this property sold probably about 20 or 30 creditors in total. Some of these people were owed just a couple hundred thousand dollars and others were owed tens of millions of dollars. And last, now that the sale date has passed, all of these people who were owed money are basically just fighting to get some or all of their money back. See, the way that debt usually works on a real estate development project like this is the developer, in this case, Niall Niami, would take out a loan to buy the property. Then he would take out another construction loan in order to build the house. And and then along the way, if he runs out of money, he might end up taking out another loan or two in order to help him get to the finish line. Now, not only do these developers have three or four big loans on projects like this by the time they get the project finished, but if there were any contractors along the way who were also not paid for the work they completed, think about the plumbers and electricians and roofers and all of that, then these contractors can also put liens on the property, which is how the debt really starts to pile up. In the case of the one, like I mentioned at the start of the video, in total, these debts amounted to around $250 million. And with the house only selling for $141 million, you guys can do the math. There are a ton of people out there who are really upset because they never got repaid. Now the single biggest creditor by far on this 944 Aerial Way project was a guy named Don Hankey. His company is called Hankey Capital. Don's company lent over $100 million to Nile Niami solely for the purpose of building and completing the one. The house did sell for $141 million, but the way that the shakeout of all the money happened is 
First, the auction house needed to be paid their fees. Then they needed to pay all of the delinquent taxes on the property, which added up to millions of dollars. And then after that, the city needed to be paid a bunch of fines and fees as well. At the end of all of that, all the money that was left was just enough to pay back Don Hankey, his $104 million loan. And unfortunately at this point, that meant that anyone else who lent money to this project would be left high and dry. Well, one of the guys who also lent a ton of money to this project, his name is Julian Rimmelard. He has stepped in and he's basically doing everything he can to try to get a cut of Don Hankey's share. Julian's company is called Inferno. They're based out of Canada and they say they lent about $21 million on the project, which was money that Niall used to buy the lot and then to get construction started over there. Now remember, the way that people are usually supposed to get repaid in situations like this is simply just based on the order that they rank on the title report. And that just means that if Don Hankey and his one $104 million loan are listed in first lien position at the top of the title report, then they should be repaid first, no questions asked. This is where the story gets a little bit confusing though, because technically Julian and his company Inferno did lend money to this project before Don Hankey, this happened in 2012. Then in 2016 though, Julian did sign an agreement with Niall Naomi that said that Niall was allowed to pay other creditors back before him. And in this case, other creditors was referring to Don Hankey. Then in 2018, another document was signed by Julian that said that not only would Don Hankey be repaid first, but he would also be bumped up to first lien position on title. The drama here exists with what happened in 2018, because what Julian is saying is that Niall Naomi's longtime friend and notary forged Julian's signature on this document and that he never agreed to let Don Hankey go into first lien position. I know that's a lot to digest guys, but this is all really important because if what this lawsuit is alleging is true, it means that Julian would be entitled to move up to first lien position on title. He would be repaid his full 21 million bucks. Then Don Hankey in second lien position would be repaid the rest. He'd be left with around $80 million. There was a big lawsuit that was filed here which outlines everything that we just talked about, plus it accuses Hanky of a bunch of other things like unfair business practices, failing to monitor its loans, and putting itself in a position to foreclose on the property. Plus the lawsuit alleges that Niles company Cressloyd padded invoices from contractors who were working on the one and then diverted that money to himself and his ex-wife. Now I can't comment on whether or not I think that Julian has a case here or if any of these accusations are legit, that's going to have to be decided in court. But there is no doubt that this lawsuit is going to slow down the distribution of funds from the sale of the one and basically just put another mess in the bankruptcy judge's hands. The good news about the property itself though is that the new owner Richard Sagian has been working with the city to complete the house, address the zoning issues, and ultimately get the CFO. Plus the original architect Paul McLean actually just posted to his Instagram account that he's glad to be back working on the project. So it looks like he's going to be involved in helping the new owner get the house finished once and for all. If you enjoyed the episode today, guys, hit that thumbs up button down below before you go. That really helps the channel out a lot. And I know I say it every time, but remember to click subscribe as well if you're not already a subscriber. I'm putting new videos just like this one out every week. But that's all I've got for you guys this time. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, see ya.